You buy your first road bike, you fall in love with cycling, but after a while, you start to think, would I be faster and enjoy cycling even more if I had a better bike? I'm going to upgrade this entry level bike and turn it into a top spec one, and I'm going to show you how. Last time I built a bike here on GCN, it was quite a while ago. So long, in fact, that the group set world has evolved a huge amount. Shimano has gone 12 speed and even 105. The group set of the people is now electric. So when Shimano asked if we could do another bike upgrade video, I jumped at the chance and I've got an awesome platform to build onto. This bike is worth just under a thousand pounds and it's absolutely ideal for beginners or people just getting into cycling. It's a Canyon Endurace AL. It's got a full aluminium frame, carbon fork, so a bit more compliance, keeps the weight down a little bit, and it's kitted out with entry level components. I absolutely love bikes like this because my first road bike was a very similar spec to this. And well, look, look how far I've come. Now I want to find out what this is going to be like if we kit it out in top of the range, all singing, all dancing bits. So I'm going to put on Shimano Jura Ace R9200, which is what 60% of the professionals in the pro peloton use. Oh, it's going to be good. But where's my brew gone? Over the course of three weekly episodes, you can follow the progress of this build here on GCN Tech. So if you've not yet subscribed and hit that bell, you know what to do. And when talking about a group set, we're often referring to the brakes, the shifters, the gears and the chain set. But wheels are also part of a group set and I'm going to be upgrading those too. So it means that when I'm done with this Canyon Endure race, it's probably going to be the most tricked out in the world ever. It's going to be proper cool. Now, talking to the bike, this is it. It's fitted with Shimano Sora, which is one of their entry level group sets. You've got 10 speed shifters, so uh, 10 sprockets at the back there, compact chain set. We've also got disc brakes, which are actuated via these cables and not hydraulic. And in this build, it weighs 9.55 kilograms and it can be yours for just under a thousand pounds. Whichever way you look at it, £1,000 is a lot of money, especially with the cost of living crisis and everything increasing with price at the moment. And yeah, there are bikes that you can get for less than £1,000 that are good. But at this price point, you start to get seriously good bikes for your money. And the components tend to have a lot of tech and features on them that were found on the top level group sets, Jura Ace, etc., just a few years back. Entry level components tend to focus on being robust, hard wearing and reliable and they can be a great option for more experienced riders who just want a more wallet friendly option. They do everything as they should but they just lack the refinement and the, the slick shifting that you get on more expensive top of the line DI2 electronic gears. If you want efficient, rapid shifting, super light components made from exotic materials and just an exquisite attention to detail, then it's got to be Jura Ace R9200. Before I start upgrading it, I just want to give you a quick overview and an outline of some of the key big differences. So at the back, it's 9 speed. Whereas on the DI2 Jura Ace, it's now 12 speed. Um, also, another big thing is that the gears are mechanical, they're not electric. And the braking, this is probably the biggest thing for me. We have got disc brakes here on Sora, but they're mechanically actuated calipers. Now, Shimano group sets turn to hydraulic calipers in the tier above this, so Tiagra, and then all the way through to the very top. And there's a big difference in performance from a cable actuated disc brake from a hydraulic one. Hydraulic ones offer more stopping power, but also greater feel and modulation so that you've got so much more control when you're applying the brake. Upgrading your cables can make a bit of a difference, but hydraulic and cable, night and day. 
So a quick reminder, this bike is currently 9.55 kilograms. I'm really keen. I just can't wait to find out how much lighter it can get with all the fancy components on. So enough jibber jabber, let's get cracking. First step, I've just got to take off all the existing bits, strip it down. Let's do it. Just taking off the Sora front derailleur, it's a great example of like the trickle down tech. So you see it's got this long lever arm here. And this is actually a feature that came in on 11 speed Jura Ace and Ultegra group sets a good few years ago. And the idea behind this longer lever arm here is it just provides a greater uh, pivot point so that it results in a lighter shifting action. You don't have to move the lever as much on the handlebars. Cool. Just before I remove the chain set, it's worth pointing out that it's pretty much the same sort of design as the top of the range Jura Ace one. So you've got the Holotech crank set with a four bolt crank arm, but then the end cap and how you get it off, it's exactly the same. In theory, I could mount the Jura Ace non-drive side crank arm onto the Sora axle. It's the same design. Check that out. We've stripped the frame. It's all ready for me to put my Jura Ace bits on. I've got them all here, but that's all I've got time for in this episode. So make sure you hit the bell um, and get notifications so that you can uh, be ready when episode two drops so you can see me put the Jura Ace and the top spec wheels on this frame. I think it's going to look absolutely mega. Of course, alternatively, you could just comment below with your postal address and I'll send you a, a reminder in the post. Um, Actually, no, don't do that because uh, nah, I can't be bothered to do that. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Bye.